Argentine Patagonia, at the southern tip of South America, is one of the planet's last great wildernesses. It might not look it from up here, but right now, it's the height of summer here in the mountains. My destination is the Vijegas River in the province of Rio Negro, and I'm absolutely miles from civilization. That is the last I'm gonna see of anybody for quite some time. As ever, my mission isn't simply to survive, I want to see if I can thrive. Patagonia. Yeah. Even the word scares me, I have to admit. And um, I know it's the same as every other environment. The survival priorities are the same. Shelter, food, fire, water. In some places, water is the biggest worry, the biggest concern, because it's the most important thing. But here, it's not really a problem. Being so remote, there's no chance of contamination in that water. It's such a fast flowing river that I'll be able to drink that. That is the purest, best tasting water I feel like I have ever drunk. It's nice to be out of the sun actually. I'm just taking a little bit of respite out of the sun. But the woodland floor immediately distracts me from thoughts of shelter and fire. Clover is um, actually quite fresh and tasty. And this here is silverweed. I'm having a bit of a salad fest here amongst the flies. Silverweed, mmm, that's nice. Sorrel, properly tasty. Ow! The horse flies are a nightmare. The only bonus is that if you take a horse fly and squeeze it, little white fluid comes out. It tastes like honey. Ow! So it's like a sort of yin and yang nature thing. They really annoy you and they bite you and they actually hurt a little bit. Ow! But um, they give you a little teaser of honey at the end, which is nice. I've got water and eaten some plants, so shelter is now my next concern, but already hunger is taking over. <laughs> I would say these are river trout. If that is the case, I think I might need to start fishing. I've got no rod, line or net, but for centuries people have caught trout just by tickling them as they hide against a riverbank. That was a fish. me being able to keep going if I continue working through um, the heat of the day. My back is already really burnt, unfortunately. I've totally taken my eye off the ball while I've been trying to catch the trout, and the thin ozone layer has had a drastic effect. Slightly humbling admission is that I've, um, I've let myself get too badly sunburned. Um, I've got superficial at the moment burns on my back, but they could, uh, very easily develop into partial depth burns, which in old medical terms means second degree burns, which means my back could bis blister, um, then get infected, it would cause cellular damage, and most importantly, actually for me, <laughs> it would mean the end of this trip, I wouldn't be able to continue. When I film in isolation, I use a drop box, which is a waterproof case to exchange my used batteries and memory cards each day. This time, it's being used for medical purposes. I'm not happy about it at all, but I'm going to be wearing a shirt. This is the first ever marooned where I'm wearing a shirt, and it's humbling. In addition to providing me coverage from the sun and stopping exacerbating the burn, I also need to take the heat out of the burn. Oh, oh, oh. That is cold! I feel cool for the first time. I was overheating properly, and um, now I'm not. Okay, it is what it is. This has happened. I'm not going to let it affect the rest of the trip. Time to crack on. That means refocusing on my key priority, shelter against the elements. Icy blasts howl up and down the valley, so I'm building a lean-to at 90 degrees to the wind.
It isn't the prettiest shelter I've ever built, but I'm happy with that. With fire and water sorted, I need to seriously think about food. I need some protein. I haven't eaten anything substantial yet. So, I'm braving the horseflies and going back into the woods. But something seems to have got there before me. Really Patagonia this time of year. As bad as good as you get for eating. I have found what I think is the carcass of a deer. That's a scapula. The easiest bone to identify. And look what I found down here. Tadpoles. Lots and lots of tadpoles. I've tasted nicer things. Crikey, that's not very tasty raw. But I could cook these, couldn't I? This is meat. It's four, it's five, seven, eight, nine, it's ten. Thirty of them. How does one cook tadpoles? Roasted tadpoles for supper. Okay, that's a tasty plate of tadpoles, isn't it? This, oh, gosh, that really just hit me then. I've eaten some horrible things in my time, but something about slimy, oh, I can feel my stomach grumbling as well, gurgling. The weather change has eased my sunburn, and I can finally get rid of this shirt. How it's meant to be. I've just seen a strawberry. Nice. Very nice. <clears throat> I really need more than 3,000 calories a day, and these won't go anywhere near that. Neither will the tadpoles. So I'm risking getting even colder and trying tickling again. But a second long day of fishing once again yields no catch. <laughs> it's so, it's so cold. Right, I've got to go back to the fire and warm up. It is properly bolted. I almost want to get my whole body over the fire. It is that cold. I literally can't stand there long enough. It's, um, I just get chilled to the bone and I'm shivering and then I want to come back to the fire. So I thought it was a method of fist trapping. I drive a notch stick into the riverbed while a second is secured to a spring-loaded bent sapling. When a fish takes the bait, the sticks separate and the spring-loaded sapling tugs the fish out of the water. It's so cold. Automated fishing trap set. It's just undeniably cold. I'm going to go back in and get next to the fire. The fire is my best friend. So my best friend. But I can't let it tie me down. Right. Let's go and take the fish, fish trap. It's gone off. There's a fish in it. Got a fish. That's oh, quite big. That is quite big. <laughs> that is a very, very good start to the day. I want to catch more. Basically, my aim for today is go mental on the fishing and um, have a proper slap up dinner. Now, I want to master catching trout by hand. And with this weather change, I can turn the cold to my advantage. I've got it. I've got... <laughs> Look at that! <laughs> I've tickled a fish. I've tickled a fish. <laughs> yes! I've never tickled a fish before. I've got to be honest, I've never tickled a fish before, but I knew that was possible. I'd already had my fingertips on one. <laughs> yes! I've dammed off a pool to keep fish alive, ready to eat later. My plan is to stock it with more fish than I can eat, a kind of living larder. Now that's thriving. No, oh, yes!
Right, let's go. I took on another fish. I'm hoping a bit of water flow will help keep the fish alive. So I've removed a couple of stones from the dam. Oh. Stafford, you complete blonker. <laughs> <laughs> you idiot. You complete and utter prat. I really wish I could just drain this pool. All right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. We've got the tiny one. That's four fish. It's just a muddy pool. But in there lay my dreams. <laughs> four fish for supper. It's time to eat. Ha ha ha, they're sizzling. For supper tonight, I have Roasted trout, four of them, of the finest trout from Patagonia, on a bed of sorrel leaf and clover. To follow, I have a bowl of wild strawberries and blueberries. That's not bad, really, is it? Okay, let's see. <laughs> Sometimes I do give myself a hard time. I berate myself for mistakes made. This is one of the times when I feel pretty proud, I have to say. I always end up appreciating life all the more at the end of it. Oh, what a wonderful life this is. Mm. One of the best meals I've ever eaten. It's the final day. The water in the little brook is uh, settled. Oh my god. One, two, three, four, five, six. There's six fish in there and I can see them as clear as daylight. But what I'm gonna do now is open up the dam and allow them all to swim free. Because I don't need them and I certainly don't want to leave them trapped here and let them lead a long and happy life.